Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Corandron Role Playing. My name is Kevin Manus Pinnings, also known as Cracked Palantir. And I will be your game master and host for this session. This is session three of Bress. Uh, <laughs> Bresses? That is. No. Freudian's tale. Uh, Brees is a female paladin played by uh, my good friend Max. Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Um, glad you're sticking around for this long. We're doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the adventure is getting getting interesting. Running into a lot of uh, um, a lot of fun fun situations and scenarios. So um, glad for well, welcome again, welcome back, or welcome anyone who's new. And hope you uh, hope you enjoy the stream. Uh, last time, uh, the last episode, we had um, Brees was uh, researching various uh, plants of uh, magical plants uh, in an effort to um, basically win the favor of a powerful magic user who was seeking information on um, several uh, unique plants and. The point is to win the wizard Prethnot to win her favor so that she will consider transporting Brees to a different world where Brees may be safe from the machinations of a powerful queen named Verlag, who was imprisoned for having dealings with a demon and was inadvertently released from that prison by Brees. Uh, and and Verlag now seeks to regain her former power and her former position. But she can only do that so long as uh, uh, Brees is compliant and present. And Brees has been trying to figure out a way to undo that, uh, undo that arrangement. Uh, Brees had traveled to... Um, a uh, wealthy uh, vineyard owner's mansion and that uh, for the purpose of using his very extensive botanical library. Um, and um, he uh, very offhandedly granted her permission. She has uh, spent um, quite a while doing research in there, um, uh, Max, for your notes, uh, you were able to basically push through until well after dark, going oh, through various books, um, looking for information on um, um, Prethnot subjects, you know, specifically the Hinterback, a tree, a giant tree that um, is able to spread its seeds by means of portals. Um, and literally seeds itself across um, uh, worlds and other dimensions. Uh, you found no information in your hours of research. You found no information on the Hinterback. You uh, also were searching for information called uh, on a plant called the runner's vine. The runner's vine uh, is a plant for our audience that grows uh, from world to world, um, and um, how it does that is not known. But since Prethnod is interested in traveling between worlds, these are these are why these plants are of interest to her. You found no information on the runner's vine. Now, the other question that you hoped to find an answer to uh, in the library was information on the fae-like. Uh, creatures that are essentially these floating, floating, um, heavy-leaved, vined creatures called the flower children that you have uh, developed a relationship with. They are willing to help you against Verlag, although they don't have a clear understanding of what Verlag is. Um, and while you did not find any information on the flower children, um, you did find information on uh, a plant um, in this world that does have the capability of uh, movement, although not from its rooted place in the ground. Uh, 
Hmm. Um, and we'll send you that information here during the session. Um, and then am I missing one? Yeah, the uh, multi-eyed plant. Right, right. Uh, for our audience, whatever it is. Right, for our uh, for our audience, um, Brees was exploring um, a um, sort of um, sort of like a large inn with a small turret or tower in the center. Um, it looked like sort of a resort or or meeting place for the wealthy, long abandoned. Um, he discovered there was water continually pouring out of the top floor. But since this is before the era of running water and indoor plumbing, um, what that water was was a good deal of mystery. And what we discovered it to be was it was a portal to an oceanic world, or a world at least that had one ocean, allowing that water to come into our world at a gradual rate and filling up the complete second floor uh, of this ruin. Um, so when Brees gets there, having to wade around in the water, he finds an entire ecosystem there, among uh, which was a plant, uh, underwater plant, that could emit a cloud of poison. Uh, it was, oh, a couple of feet high, maybe, a couple of feet across. And it had um, little eyes all the way across its leaves. Um, and so um, um, you did find, strangely enough, information on that in, um, a, a, is it a journal? Is that correct? It's a journal from a sea captain, apparently of that world. Hmm. Well, that so okay. Inadvertently, I also found a lot about that world. <laughs> it's inhabited by people. Yeah, you would. Yeah, so there would probably be information in there. Um, it's uh, clearly a world with um, a fully growing and viable civilization. Although, as Verlag told you when she researched the portal for you, yeah, the atmosphere there is toxic to us to humans dwarves elves right. etc right and so um so you're not you weren't able to escape that way not that she would have let you anyway mm -hmm. um but um but apparently there are there is intelligent life that can survive there and they use watercraft and so on um um and clearly someone from our world must have either traveled there or one of them have traveled here and left a copy of the journal. And then that journal must have been translated. Yeah. Um, actually, I guess it is. I guess the only explanation really is that most likely is that one of us went there because they would have to have learned the language. Right. In a written had some means of translating it. Yeah. So they would have to have been there long enough. So, um, so, so uh, in some ways, that begs the question for you that if you did escape to what would be otherwise a hostile world, is there, um, you know, are there magical items or herbs, that sort of thing that could allow you to survive in a hostile environment um, and thereby escape the clutches of their lag and her intent to rebuild her power? Um, so, um, you know, you... Um, um, so that's sort of the status of your research. I'll email you uh, a more thorough example. The, the, the sea captain um, from that other world, uh, he and his crew were marooned for a while on a place called the Isle of Seas. Um, and strangely, there's references to um, not just high tide and low tide. They don't have those terms. There are numerous tides with numerous <laughs> names. And so they, they continually uh, shifted camp just to stay ahead of the tides. Right. Uh, and in their time marooned on the Isle of Seas, they saw this little plant uh, interacting in the water. And it is, uh, it, they gave it the name um, of a night watch. Uh, a little joke on its on its, 
little eyes on yeah. its uh, edge of its leaves, as well as its um, uh, the fact that it seemed to be more uh, active at night. Mm -hmm. um, so that is what you've researched. Um, um, you know, someone's been hovering around and, you know, bringing you books and sh showing you the section on, um, uh, uh, you know, where sort of unusual plants are and so on. And, and um, you know, some of it's just scrolls where you read through and um, um, there is, um, I mean, you read about a lot of other sort of encounters and situations with unusual plants. Yeah. Um, um, Which is interesting in of itself, but. Right. Uh, but a lot of it is very vague. Um, of course, not surprising, the majority is, um, you know, it's set in, in Karandran itself as opposed to going through a portal or something. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, but there are references, um, in some of the material you read to, um, the names of other worlds that have, uh, uh, that have much more where, where plants capable of self movement are much more common. Okay. Um, and apparently, um, there are, um, um, hello, pooch hugger. Good to see you back. Um, so there are, um, so there are references to three other worlds where just in passing, they reference, um, the fact that where our world doesn't have that many of them, these worlds do. So one is Hadabar. Um, H A D D I B A R. Mm -hmm. Um, there is no reference as to like how to get there or anything like that. It just be made up. <laughs> is this peer reviewed? <laughs> is this peer reviewed? This plants from another world and it talks and walks. That's <laughs> right. Um, another such world. Um, um, is Gungrim, G-U-N-G-R-I-M. Um, there's a clear reference there to, quote, using portals and other means to reach it. Mm. Um, and the third world that they name, again, with a larger population of uh, plants that can move under their own power. Hello, Mark. Welcome to the, welcome to the stream. I hope you enjoy it. Um, and um, um, so the other world is Adelness. And I will, that's A T T L E, and then a space, capital N I S S. Okay, autocorrect. Not mean to type battleness. Wow, that's funny. Battleness. All right. So um, I'm sitting here with my drink like I'm a drunk. Let me just actually drink. <laughs> Drinks are for looking, not drinking. That's right. Um, so, um, there you have some, what, Quinn, good to see you, Kelly, hello, uh, everyone, let's, um, let's all take a moment and tell Quinn to feel better, Quinn, feel better. We all love you, man. Um, so, um, um, so there you go. So there's some of the things you've learned. Um, was idleness reachable in any mention of portal? Oh, forgive me. Forgive me. I should roll. Yeah. 
There's no reference to how to get there. Okay. Um, miracle roll. There's a oh, mention okay. that Gungrim is a very hospitable world for our kind of our kind, um, and is very much. Um, and, and is there are several? Uh, well, I don't want to say there are several establishments there. That it's very hospitable to to humans. There's plenty of food and water and uh, intelligent life, and the atmosphere is breathable. Well, the only thing is, well, there's certainly there's certainly there is the, and the sense you have is that the writer on this particular text um, has been there and is okay. clearly one of your kind. So I think there's evidence that it is relatively hospitable. I think your problem is you need a, um, that you need, um, you need a way to it. Well, right. But I, I almost feel like, um, what if I just tell Pref not, Hey, I need to get to Gungrim. Doesn't that solve half of her problem of like searching for a world? Or maybe well, she knows them off the top of her head, you know. Well, but. what's interesting about that is, for instance, we call our planet Earth. But other civilizations looking at us from afar, they don't call us Earth. So there's no label on these worlds. True. She might not even. Exactly. She might have heard of the world, but doesn't doesn't know that name. Exactly. Now, I mean, it's, you know. I or mean, I take true. the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you are in desperate straits. It's certainly. Uh, um, okay. Well, you know what? I'll. Um, what I just write down because I have paper and pencil, you know, or whatever the equivalent of pencil is, ink and quill. Uh, write down some of the details about Gungrim, uh, especially yeah. since that one it said was reachable by portals, just some key words. That describe the world, and I could always bring it up with Preth not saying, "Is this such a, you know, does this ring a bell? Does this seem like a safe world?" And could right. you take me there? Right. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, absolutely. So you make notes on it. Um, uh, you know, um, you know, the fact that um, movable plants are <laughs> very common, and it seems to be a yeah. hospitable place, and. Um, um, so, um, but yeah, there's, uh, so there's, there's something there, you know, you've got something, Ooh. um, it's, uh, you know, mid evening now, um, you've, uh, you've read a good deal. Um, the attendant left to see to your wishes, um, tells you that, uh, if you're, uh, ready the, you know, they can bring you, uh, supper in your room. Um, uh, you know, as you recall, you're going to try to keep out of, um, you know, keep out of, uh, Olden's the way. The master. Yeah. Um, uh, Olden, uh, for those of you who don't remember, Olden is the eccentric elven, uh, Lord of the house. Uh, he's there. He uh, runs a vineyard and he's going to, uh, he's, he's allowed sort of very offhandedly and irritably <laughs> allowed Breeze to, access to his extensive library and um, the house staff has decided to smuggle Brees in for, for the night uh, because they don't want her traveling on the road at dark. Um, you want to add, it, add a little marquee? Uh, oh, well, my little caption. I should do that. It's yeah. a good idea, sir. Um, so... Um, Um, let's do this. Um, So do you want to try to keep reading? Um, I mean, you're, you know, your character has, uh, you know, obviously not the most patience in the world. 
And yep. so, but you've, I mean, you've got to, you were able to push through decently and um, raid well, that id. I do have to be somewhere in, the, in mid morning. I have a meeting tomorrow with uh, Adabir and his friend. So I might, conscious of that, actually just go to bed, you know, once I feel like going to bed rather than sure. trying to push through too far. Okay. Well, actually, you need to make sure tomorrow, today's the seventh, right? Tomorrow's the. Um, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, indeed, tomorrow. Yeah. Um, now, also in an earlier episode, we found out that. Uh, um, we found out that Verlag may pay you a visit very soon. Um, right, right. Um, sorry, I was checking my. And I think the current plan, when when she, if she does show up, or when she does show up, is to just uh, kind of deny, <laughs> like the symbolist rude, you know, ignorance. Um, basically. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, yeah, I'm like, I, 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 I've heard of a thing called a luck too, but I don't know. Right. I never talk with him. Um, but then, then again, I don't know. I don't want to get into the whole discussion of like, of, of you know, thinking and rethinking, but can Barilag sense any of the soul shear that's like impacted me? How to, right. If she does, then that might be a clear indication. Right. Um, um, trying to see if I had a caption for soul shear. I don't think I did. Um, yeah, I don't think I do. Um, update my goals really quick here. Another thing I need to do is talk to Aldruff, uh, cause I yes. kind of postponed that until I, uh, heard from Prethnod and, that time has come and gone. So, um, have you asked? Um, have you asked the wizard Prethnot? Have you asked her about um, about um, the Unmoth? No, not at a chance. I've only seen her once. Um, yeah, I didn't know if you. I guess passed word to her through. Um, no, no. I mean, I, I did say I'm still interested in helping her, and uh, yeah, we'll be seeing him again uh when when was that we'll have word to iron uh i don't, I don't think i put a date on that oh lord me and my typos what is going on stupid keyboard there we go um so yeah, all, all I know is I'm, I'm getting some more information and I do want to relay word to uh, Prethnot's coachman. Um, though I didn't write down when, when he would be back in. Um, I think he was going to check. Was he going to check? Know, I think he's going to check uh, for information at the tea and loaf you're in. Uh, and... Um, and um, that was going to be the, you know, he was just going to check in every other day or so and just see if you've left any notes. Um, okay, for yeah. Him at your end. That's my recollection. Wait, how would I, I just leave, tell like the owners of the inn, like, hey, if this man comes in, he needs to be told this. That well, you would of, leave a note. Leave a message. Okay. You would leave a note for him. Yeah. And um, he knows to ask at the bar, you know, okay. Okay. Um, that's pretty common. Oh, so I was talking to Josh today and he was, uh, he's become enthralled with, um, this really cool piece of historical information, which is the tax rolls for Paris in 1294. Oh, cool. And so it's got all these professions and things listed like, you know, there's a, there was a 150 barbers on the tax rolls. Yeah. In Paris. And all, they're all male and there's one female. So 151. Um, wow. Well, you see the gender divide in those things. I mean, that kind of split, 100 to 1 kind of split, over and over again, you see that in the 
in the role of shoemakers. And then well, it's also interesting that they just bother to make that distinction as if it's like, oh, this is important. We need to make sure. Oh, exactly. For purposes of taxes, who cares? You know, right. um, that's really yeah. cool. Interesting. So, I'm assuming that's in the uh, public domain, right? When over 800 years old, it's, <laughs> it's no one just, owns that anymore. The city it, of Paris. That's right. It barely, it barely made it through. So I need to get him to uh, send me that link. Um, uh, cause I think that'd be interesting for both of us just to look at. Um, well, all right. So you, uh, you head to your room, you ask, yeah, just, you know, go ahead and bring me a dinner. They bring you a, a bowl of soup and they bring you a, uh, they bring you a crust of bread and some wine. Um, none of it means anything to you, of course. Your character doesn't particularly care about food. And, um, Mark is from the Caribbean. That's very cool. Um, I was gonna. I was gonna share the Prethnot thing. Where's the, find the Prethnot caption? There we go. So, um, so um, you um, eat. Uh, roll for me. Fifty-nine. Food poisoning. It is. I know. Who are you, me? And uh, <coughs> yeah, you're ready to pass out. Perfect. Um, and so uh, you turn in fairly early. Um, and, um, Hey, I know that glass and you, um, fall, uh, you fall immediately asleep. Now roll for me over the night. Uh, 62. Okay. And 12. And one more time. I like that 12. Uh, six. Okay. You wake up very bright and early. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, get dressed and so on. They haven't brought a uh, basin of hot water, but there will be no doubt. Uh, oh, there's probably a pole. There's probably a bell pole in your room, in fact. Well, yeah. I don't know if I want to ring that in case the master's nearby. Oh, that's true. I'm it's a dummy. Like, who the hell is in my house? <laughs> well, as you know, it doesn't sound throughout the house. It sounds only in the servant's room. True. Okay. And he's probably not going to be in the servant's room. Yet, right. Especially this early. Right. Um, so, um, <laughs> is it, is it worth it? It's like, do I want to go? Yeah. I'll just ring the bell. If there is <laughs> one, sure. Yes. There's a bell pull and you just, you know, give it a tug and, and, um, and, um, there's a light tap at the door and they open it and, um, bring uh, me hot water. When they bring you a basin of hot water, Thank you. Uh, they ask if you're ready for breakfast uh, sure. I, you know, I'll tell him breakfast, but I do need to be in a hurry. So I don't mind. Well, you can be in a hurry. Go ahead. That's fine. But, oh, you mean you are in a hurry? No, yeah. No, yeah. Like, you know, I need to be at Claren's place midpoint. In fact, I guess I, I should ask you about that. Would it be more polite maybe to show up at Claren's before breakfast? I guess he wouldn't expect that of me, right? Maybe right. Probably, I mean, Right. Yeah, it seems impractical. So yeah, I mean, I'll I'll, I'll breakfast then, and then I'll uh, yeah, I'll, I'll set out. They bring you uh, you know a quick thing of eggs and bacon, and um, you scarf those down. Um, are you looking to or oh, sorry walk all the way there? Um, ah, teleport, man. Uh, that's it. That's Let's walk walk over the next hill, and then. Poof. Okay. Right. So you want to also need to grab my stuff that I left uh, in the bushes. So. Oh, that's right. So you thank yeah. them. Um, do you do you think you should? Do you need to to you know say goodbye to the housekeeper and t and ask her for further access, or do you think you're done? Uh I think it's just a good connection to have open. So I do want to thank her give her maybe offer maybe a few coins and uh and, and be on my way um and, and yeah and, and throw in there it's like and you know i would uh, uh it would be lovely if i could ever come back right um she says i i will do everything i can to 
to uh, influence the master in that way to allow you to access again. Um, and um, I certainly hope we'll be seeing you again. She refuses your money. All right. She says you're a guest at the house. And Should I give her like, like hold of a mithril, are you sure? That's right. Like really blow their mind. Like, hey, That's, we're right. Like, what? That's right. You, uh, you think you don't want money until I show you Ferrari money. And then, um, uh, um, okay, then I will so, um, be on my way. Um, Quinn is going to eat royal duck in the hospital. I don't know. They so they don't they don't let you have steam, but they'll they'll give you duck. Right. Even the vegetables have to be baked. What? Um. So um. So you you know depart. Um. You go recover your gear. Um. And now I assume you're going to um. I guess you're going to teleport to that crossroads south of Convergence. Well, no, I had a spot particularly. Oh, uh, right by. Yeah. That's right. I'd forgotten that. I'd forgotten you had memorized the location. The, beside left, the, <laughs> the left front corner outside of Adabir's house. That's, That's my favorite spot in all of Carandron. <laughs> Here, let's, uh, let's, in, let's put it on a map. That's the left front corner of uh, Adabir's <laughs> Right, Right <laughs> over there. <laughs> he lives all the way up over here near the sea of okay. uh, That's right. Um, all right. Mm. So um, you're going to cast teleport. I don't think um, for you know for our chat audience. I don't think given um, given your luck with spell casting, I don't think a drum oh. roll would be out of out of place here. Yeah, I already failed two teleports yesterday. And, yeah. And so. just to encourage you, so if our if our uh, if our chat could um, go, um, if I could, if we could get our chatters to um, give us a drum roll, then um, uh, Max will. Um, what's a drum roll or what's Royal Duck? Now I'm really confused. <laughs> the Extreme. drum emojis. We need some drum emojis. That's right. Drum emojis or just say drum roll in preparation for his roll. I assume you're going to, there you go, Kelly. Um, and a Royal drum roll is particularly special. Thank you, Kelly. And uh, are you, I assume you're using your adder for yes. casting. Yeah. And then, um, all right. So start rolling. There's Quinn's drum roll. Thank you. All right. Rolling it up. That's a 35. All right. You cast the spell. Now roll to aim. 29 29 not not great um so here in out of beer's bed <laughs> mark if you have a specific question buddy just type it right in there we'll do our best to answer it or uh oh, our wow. lovely chat community well we'll do it so 29 is uh is not great as kelly suggested uh, apparently suck. you suck quite correct madam um, God, so, um, so you are, um, you wind up, uh, not exactly where you expected to be. Fair enough. Um, you instead, um, no doubt because, um, that's ah, funny. Uh, Pooch Hugger is saying that uh, her friend Blaze isn't here, and so he's your lucky charm. Oh, that's, that's right. Why you, that's why you're rolling low, buddy. But you're, um, oh, there you go, Mark. Mark with a big drum roll. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it brings me to, I should hop to, let me see if I have this still loaded in my cut and paste. Yes. So we do accept donations, but we also have links to Brees's, uh notes, her personality, um, her, uh, her, lots of stuff. And so here you go. So, uh, Mark, so if you want to take a look, you can click on any of this and this show you, um, Quinn, that sounds really good, but duck is high in fat. You should know for your calorie counting. That's why it's good. 
Uh, well, this is true. This is true. But Quinn is trying to be really good with his diet. But anyways, so Mark, you can click on those and you can see like his notes. Uh, you can see like his adventures up to date. Um, and many, many pages of notes all right. about Greece, yeah. what she likes, you know, long right. walks on the beach, men with a lot of money. Right. That sort of stuff. Um, and so, um, and so anyway, and you can click on our donate page and just read the funny, uh, the funny memes we have there. Um, all right. So where do I end up, Kevin? <laughs> so you wind up, um, in the new world gun group. No, I'm kidding. You, <laughs> you are, yeah, I wouldn't do that to you uh, more mm. than twice. So now, you know, Karen is still over here working on your research notes. I must and have some very successful research. It's like 65 pages that she's got going on here. She's got a publishing deal. She's in the room here in the office with me, and she is trying to type this stuff up. What is that? What? What is that second one? Nature's Mirror? Yeah. Is the second thing. Oh, is the other one. I, did it have a name? No. What? It didn't have a name. Well, then why are you giving it a name? Because I have a name. I got a name. <laughs> but it didn't have a name. Technical the difficulties. Was researching. Sorry. Um, you go nuts. You you go crazy, girl. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so sorry, sorry everyone. This is um. It's our anniversary. Um. So um, you wind up at the crossroads. Oh. Um. So nothing, uh, nothing too out of the way. Um, so uh, again, just to catch up some of our new viewers. Um, you can put the marquee for out of beer. If you want. Yeah, that's what I'm looking. I like that you call them marquees. You're very proper. Because yeah, uh, they, they're words that slide across the screen. That's just, <clears throat> just a marquee. I guess it is a caption, but just the well, way. that's what they call them. That's what the system calls them. Oh, it so, calls them marquees. Huh? They calls them captions or marquees? Uh, they call them captions. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, caption. so Adabir, uh, so Brees has now successfully teleported near Adabir's neighborhood, a region south of the city called the Woolen Way, at one time noted for, um, uh, noted for um, textiles and sheep farming. Uh, but now it's largely a region of, um, of wealthy. Um, um, this place is cool. You guys are really cool too. Thank you, Mark. I hope, I hope everyone treats you well. And if they don't treat you well, I will send Max after you. He's right down there, right there. Squish his head. Um, so, and Mark, tell your friends, Hey, spread the word. Uh, we love, uh, we love having it. Yeah, we don't know what's going on, what, why some of the links work, and why they work for some people but not others. Really? So other people haven't... Well, Kelly consistently has problems. Like, she can't open hardly anything of Ganry's character. And see, now Mark can't open it either. Mark. Hmm. That's so weird to me. I don't know... I don't know... Maybe, what... um, I can give it a try if I... Oh, oh I can't, Kelly! I can't scroll down in the chat. Turn it. Okay, uh, Karen. Kelly sends her love to you. Love back. Hmm. Yeah, I can't. I can't experiment with the links. I can't see the rest of the chat, so I might have to. You, I can put them in the private chat. Yeah, if you do that, then I can try to open them up. See if they work for me, at least. I mean, they'll probably work for me since I. Uh... You created them. Oh, you know what? I wonder. If... I mean, Bitly, they don't expire, do they? Weird. <clears throat> well. Oh, it went, it went it went straight there for me. I yeah, and I don't uh, you don't I don't have problems with them either when I click on them. But maybe we'll work on that. Maybe we need to get Kelly yeah. on here. Maybe yeah. we'll try that. Um, Jeez, I almost just exited the stream by accident. Okay. Um, yeah, well, we'll have to research that out of the yeah. out of the screen, find out why the links aren't working. So, um, so anyway, so uh, 
So Ma Max Brees teleports successfully to a crossroad outside of the region called the Woolen Way. And uh, he's headed to um, Adabir's house. Um, Adabir is uh, originally from uh, one of the desert lands to the east and, um, and has been researching demons for years and years. So <laughs> Kelly says they really love their... Uh, their sheep there at the Woolen Way. <laughs> uh, it's a deep love. Oh so, my gosh. Um, so, um, all right. Um, so, start walking. Uh, now, last time yeah. you were in this area, you had a rather violent and unfortunate encounter. So, let's talk about like uh, your state of readiness. Well, you know, I'm wearing nice clothes too. So, I don't know if. Uh... Do what I want to actually change into my adventuring clothes, put on my armor, and then when I get to the house, change back? Or How long does that take me? Well, I mean, you've got plenty of time now. It's early, early morning. I'm definitely going to do that then. I don't want to. Uh, the other option yeah. is just to try to skip the danger and teleport to Adabir's house. And you're saying that's less dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, uh... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's less dangerous. Let's uh, let's let's just do the walk anyway. Um, I think just because I have I have plenty of time. Um, I don't know. Then I am I am impatient. I don't know. I would think like I just want to get there. Yeah, let's try to teleport. I think like thinking of you know taking off all my clothes and putting on my armor and stuff. And oh it's dear lord, like, it's that's just gonna take too long. You know, I need to. Get it's there. another drum roll. We'll mark another use of your adder. I assume. Yes. Um. And um. And um. Roll to cast and then roll to aim. Okay, one second. I need to go through and find the adder and mark it. Well, for cast is a 91. Oh, very nice. <laughs> um, the name is a 26. What is? 26 for aim. Gee whiz, man. Um, I'm going to assume you spent some time concentrating and just give that to you. Yes. Um, you. Your, so you've cast two spells. So in terms of exhaustion, the first spell cost you 15 because it wasn't a great casting. But this other one was so well. Uh, you cast it so well, it only cost you five. Um, All right. so, so there you go. So speaking of that, is my HP back to full? I, I was down to 117 from all my failed teleports the other day. Oh yeah, you were beat up. Where's your max? I've lost your hot. Seven is my max. So that was yesterday, actually, where I just thirty almost twice end up taking a bunch of damage. And, uh, yes. Rest, yes. So. You would be. Yeah. You would be healed by now. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, Very nice. Thanks for checking those links, Kelly. By the way, appreciate that. She said the only the one that's not working is her personality. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, that's hilarious. Did you Doing see an extra die. D D one thousand. That's right. I, I ended up, and then I roll. I ended up getting like a forty or something. Hey, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. Let me check the personality link real quick. Maybe that one is. Yeah, maybe I should do that one. Kelly, haven't you had instances in which none of the links have worked? Personality works for me, so. And it works for me as well. Mm -hmm. So. All right. So, boom, you're there. Um, the Blackstone Manor of Adabir. Um. Oh, I need to I need to hop and find her. By the way, I haven't undone the holy lock on my uh, on my bag. Uh, just might as well keep that there. Um, sure. Forgot how long that lasts for. Uh, uh, two days per level, so it's eight days that would stay there. So seven nice. months. Let me see. All right. Let me find this. Oh, shoot. What is the... I thought I had it rolled up. Oh, there it is. I see her now. Uh, 
Um, man, drawing a blank here as to what to do. All right. <clears throat> um, so you um, you've obviously got plenty of time now. Um, so what do you want to do to kill the time? Um, you can hear people about. Oh, so, you know, I didn't even think is it's still that early. Yeah. I mean, it's still early morning. Um, right. But, um, I just, I just like, I'm like, I got to get there and I got there. I'm like, damn it. I'm too early now. <laughs> you're just, now you're going to be just, uh, just, um, well, I mean, I'll go just go for a walk around, around the grounds near his house. I don't know if anyone will pay me mind or I'm dressed nicely. So I don't think people are going to be too suspicious. Right. Right. Um, what the heck? Hmm. Must've been a typo. All right. Um, So yeah, I mean you you could just you know you could just find a tree to sit under, you know. Yeah. Um, Either walk or tree, or I mean I have some. Well, I want to just do some reading. Is there enough light? To... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. I mean it's okay. So yeah, you just find a a bench under a tree under some of the the garden areas, and you just read for a while, and just keep trying to remind yourself of the of the time and watch the sun. Um, and, um, and so, um, Kevin is a nice person name. Oh, you don't know our Kevin. I see. I see how it's going to be Kelly. I see. I see. Um, uh, he's not nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, what's really funny and shocking is, uh, Kevin, uh, means handsome. And how sad is that? Look you at this thing. Up. Look at this. Wait, wait. Let me just so you can. Oh, no, it's not. Mm -mm. None, of this. <laughs> None of that. No, it's not good. Not it's not good. good. Um, she got one of those virtual uh, avatars. <laughs> that's right. Thanks. Hi, Blaze. Mm. Welcome back. Um, hey. So, um, um all right so yeah it's clearly time to to go are they meeting at at is that is that the goal that's a good are question you, um one sec and yeah this is why you need to keep notes i am yeah. keeping the problem is i ever the more notes you keep the more you need to maintain them so i have to move stuff around right now i'm moving erasing all my notes about olden saying i need to meet olden and replacing it with i did meet olden so so hold your horses. He's a, I'm a, a massive doofus. Is that right, Pooch Hugger? Maybe, Pooch Hugger, but you love me. So. Okay. Uh, right. So his name was Lashwin. La Lashwin? Lashwin. Lashwin, yeah, the yeah, I should do a caption for Lashwin. All I have here is uh, agree to meet Adabir's friend Lashwin mid morning on the eighth. Um, so, uh, so all I can assume is that we said to meet up here. That's what I'm gonna go. Okay. And they were, he said they were very close by. Like I'm pretty sure, like a walk, you know. Yeah, a walk or a ride. I mean. Clearly, sort of the sense is in the neighborhood, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, did, did I read my tome for any significant amount of time, or kind of just? Oh yeah, let's roll that up. Yeah, it's uh, let's call that two hours of reading on your spell book. Um, so. Um, let me post this real quick. Um, okay.
So yeah, you're here to meet Lash One. Um, Daggummit, my stupid <laughs> S. My S key is messing up, everybody. It's driving me fucking bananas. Man. All right. God, we're going to get this done. It's like, yeah, my stream fails because of the S key. Um, so, yes, the plan is to meet here. I went ahead and rolled for that. And so, um, and in fact, you hear, um, you hear a horse approaching. Um, and you just kind of, you know, I guess turn the corner and, and, uh, and uh, make yourself known. Yep. Okay. Ahoy so, there. Aha. Um, oh yeah. And to our new, for our new streamers, uh, Brees' character is, um, crazy, um, <laughs> Is a is crazy uh, beautiful. I mean, she is like, like she really is like a supermodel, and so like it's very interesting. Mark, what's your question? Um, but um, oh, that would be eight thirty p.m. Mark. Um. So um, it's uh so well eight thirty for uh for us here in Texas. In, in central time so oh that's hilarious wherever you are <laughs> that's hilarious so obviously it's a female human she's older um short thin relatively attractive she's got um short graying black hair fairly unkempt dark brown eyes um and she's got breeches uh which is really unusual um i mean it's almost shocking to see a woman wearing pants as mm. opposed to a dress uh or a long skirt of some sort mm. um she wears a shirt with long flowing sleeves um and um the clothes too are rather um disheveled um so um adabir um is there as well as the daughter that's um oh what's her name fella joe is that right is that the uh something like that um yeah uh, fella uh yeah fella glell fella glell yeah fella glell is adabir's daughter very protective of adabir uh um so um yeah, uh, Adabir is in very poor health. I mean, tends to be bedridden kind of, of health. And um, um, and so, um, yeah, she sort of dotes on him. And and, um, and so both Adabir and, and uh, uh, Fal Falaglel are there um, to greet her. Um, she rode, uh, the horse herself, no carriage or anything. Um, she gets off, um, she has with her a bag that seems uh, mostly empty, um, and a satchel and, uh, she swings off and, uh, um, um, weird. So I was reading the chat. <laughs> Mark has a food alchemist, apparently. But um, so um, so um, she and Falaglel hug. Uh, they shake hands and they and they head to um, um, they head into the house. You are sort of unseen. You sort of let them go. You know, they take the uh, they take the horse away to the stables. You walk in. Uh, into into view after they've gone. You just you know going to tap on the door here in a minute. Oh, wow. Um, and so um, you uh, you know but you know you you make all your final little corrections because you know you do like to look your best. And then you, you knock on the door, um, and uh, you're ushered in, um, by that uh, stern, silent butler and um. 
and introductions are made. Um, everyone's sitting around in the parlor room where you first met Atabir. They have, of course, with Atabir's condition, they have to have a good fire going, and, and he is um, uh, definitely... Um, um, oh, damn, wrong button. Wrong button on my database. There we go. Um, you can already um, hear her um, talking. Um, Lashwin, uh, her voice is fairly pleasant, and uh, she's um, she's um, I mean, she's got them laughing already. I mean, she's she is just sort of a treat, hmm. um, and uh, sort of a delight, and uh, clearly um, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Um, as they announce you, you know, everybody rises out of beer, of course, rises with a great deal of help. And, um, and, um, yeah, I stare down out of beer, the crippled man for not rising fast enough. That's right. You How are, dare you not ra rise when a lady. Enters. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, upon closer inspection, Lashwin, Lashwin just needs a makeover and you wish so much that you could help her. Um, she really is. She's just a mess. Um, they're, they're not, her clothes are not just wrinkled. There are clear tears in them here and there. Um, she just doesn't keep herself up very well. And, and wow. that's just, it's, I mean, it's just ridiculous. And, and that was a fine horse she rode in on. It, she's clearly got money. And of course, to live up here, she has to have money, but she is just not um, about her appearance. Uh, her hair is worse than you expected. Mm. Um, there's stuff in her teeth. I mean, it's it's unfortunate. Um, wow, <laughs> that is interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so she comes up. She's um, she, you know, um, she's just sort of a very warm person, and she she um, shakes your hand. And, um, and said, you know, uh, you're, uh, um, you must be Brees, my dear. You are even lovelier than they described. Um, and I, I could uh, say the same for you. No, I don't say <laughs> <don't say> <laughs> um, so, Yes, it's, uh, I am. It's a pleasure, pleasure to meet you, Lashwood. You're like, I am, uh, you, and you're like, I am wonderful. I don't know if you know how wonderful. <laughs> you are right. I am wonderful. Um, but I am the best. Oh, this is kind of cool. I can have you. I can have my database open, but down below. That's nice. I can see you. Um, so, um, um, so she asks where you're from and, and how you know Atterbeer. And, um, and this is all, um, you know, a, Things are, are, you know, until they sort of, you know, start veering into the areas of Verilag and all that kind of stuff. They're, um, you know, they're fairly cordial and so on. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, it does she seem to kind of conduct conversation, you know, like kind of, a, you know, like you said, cordial, like, uh, you know, respectful. Um, uh, yes. She's very, monotone. yeah. She's, she's courteous. You know, she's, um, you know, she's clearly had some upbringing except in her. Mm -hmm and her attire and upkeep. Um, and so, um, so courteous court. Yeah. That's courteous. It. Why yeah. don't we call it courteous? We should. And then there's a courteous, which means having a voice. that sounds like an accordion. <laughs> accordion. So, you know what I found out the other day? I found out that Karen's dad knows how to play the accordion. I did not know that. Wow. Um, one of the other, uh, reasons that he's such a lady killer, but, um, so, um, Hey, if I scroll this over this way, look at that. So, um, there we go. So, um, so the thought is, you know, uh, so gradually it's turned to, um, you know, real reason you're here. And, um, and so they say, basically, um, um, you know, um, what is it that you wanted my help with? And she well, looks at you. 
Okay, Lashwin. Um, I am interested in the possibility of permanently um, going to another world uh, and not without a trace uh, to, to find a to find a hospitable you know world like this one uh, and be able to be taken there um, and, you know with in the worst case to start a brand new life. <laughs> Um, it's a long story of the reasons why. It had to be mentioned that we wouldn't be discussing much about why you wish to run. That's, um, that's well and good. Um, it is possible. Um, uh, I, really quick, is there? It's just us three, right? There's no one else in the room. Or right. is, I guess Falagel as well. Or um, yeah, uh, Falagel is there, but she's, um, you know, um, I mean, she knows that there's going to be some things here that she doesn't. Get. Right. Right. I just want to make sure you no know one's, you know, obviously right. eavesdropping. Yeah. yeah. Um. Um, she's like, my own, um, go find your whole new world, Quinn. I did, that's when everyone asked me what I'm, what my character is trying to do. I just play play the song. Uh, that's my, right. To find a whole new world. So when I was uh, when I was a student, I hung around with a lot of engineers and, we, and uh, in college. And uh, there was one engineer who was um, – I don't think he was an exchange student. I think he was, I think he, his, his uh, parents were, his parents must have been naturalized though, but they were from some part of the Middle East. And so Aladdin was really huge at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just remember him walking by, he was one of my girlfriend's friends at the time. And he, um, he walked, um, he walked by one time and I heard him just uh, complaining. He's like, you stupid Americans. It is not Aladdin. It is Al Adin. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, but I care that I do that all the time. I'd be like stupid Americans. You <laughs> stupid Americans. So um, I, should, I did not know that actually. That's yeah. Really cool. You should read the Wikipedia article on Aladdin. It's really interesting. So most people think that it's part of the Arabian Tales, Arabian Nights, right? right? And of course, Disney thinks that, but it's not. It is not a part of that. It's in, it was added at some point, and now um, it's just stuck around as a matter of publishing tradition that it's in there. Yeah, but it was not a part of the original Arabian Nights. Interesting. And, and it's based on, uh, apparently it's based on this um, gentleman's life uh, when he was a young man. Um, in, but it's not set in any place in the Middle East. Uh, it's actually set in one of uh, the um, cities in China. Mm. Uh, but it's a really interesting, the Wikipedia article is really interesting. I've heard of that, like Aladdin or Aladdin. You know, it was supposed to be Chinese. I can't remember where I heard that from. Right. Another uh, funny note about Arabian Nights is my friend, like uh, I had a friend who read, you know, one of the translations of the whole thing. And it's, it's such a common trope is to have like, you know, somebody steal something or be threatened, you know, get caught and like, we're going to take your life. And it's like, wait, wait, I'll tell you a story if you spare my life. That happens like so many times. And sometimes like it happens within the story they're telling. <laughs> it's wow. just like a trope. It's like, well, if you want to hear a good story, just go and try to threaten, threaten to stab someone and they'll probably, probably <laughs> tell you a good story. Right. It's like nothing like, there's nothing like uh, quality literature. Thank you, baby. Uh, you know, uh, given at the uh, at knife point, there's nothing like it's the best literature. Is uh, the adrenaline you know fuels yeah. your your writing? Story That's right. Your writing, so yeah. uh, nothing says quality literature like a knife to the throat, um, <laughs> which means Hollywood could use a lot more knives. Uh, <laughs> point. So, uh, point taken. So. Um, <clears throat> right. So I just tell her that um, you know don't. As little as we can discuss is the safer, safest for all of us, the less we discuss about the reasons why. Um, uh, 
Let me see. Roll for me. Eight. Nicely done. Thank you. Um, she says that she says that you know in her age, um, you know, opening a portal to a different world is quite it's quite dangerous. Mm. Uh, it's very powerful magic. Um, we didn't even. Sorry, but we did. Is she human? She's just an she old. She is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Human, female, older. Right. Because if she was an old elf, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> very right. old. Uh, well, that was. Uh, we had a character named Heriotus who was in this game for years and years, and he was crazy old, um, <laughs> and he was a survivor of the Elven Pox, which is also a rarity. Oh yeah, yeah. And they in uh, and and um, um, they inadvertently <laughs> killed him. Karen and Andrew's characters inadvertently killed him by convincing him to come on one last adventure. Oh my god! And they offered, you know, they, they, we'll make sure nothing happens to you, kind of a thing. Right. But the place they were exploring, um, which was a place that Heriotus selected, he had actually hired uh, Karen and Andrew's character and. The tower um, that they explore, were exploring, the whole purpose of the tower was to gradually poison magic users. Oh, interesting. Um, that was his defense against, that was this other wizard, the, the wizard that owned the tower, that was his defense against colleagues coming in and stealing his secrets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so the whole structure of the tower was... Um, Trap, yeah. Uh, yeah, and so um, so they were exploring. Karen's not wasn't a magic user. Uh, Andrew was, but not but not uh, not too much. And and uh, but seriously, they they killed this. I mean, character, and then all oh, all the stuff that ensued from that was crazy. Plot twist: It was Lashwin's tower. Last <laughs> That's right. Last and I kill wizards all the time. <laughs> exactly. They just taste so good. Nom, 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 nom. Um, oh, my gosh. So, well, Quinn, you can't just thank Andrew. You have to thank Karen, too. She was on board with the plan to, oh, come on, Heriotis. It'll be fun. You'll have a good time. Um, so um, she says, I know of only one world. Um, my, my studies... Uh, over the years, I did not have much success reaching worlds with um, that were habitable. Um, now, there are, of course, ways around that. Um, but um, um, I have visited uh, over 11 such worlds with habitable environments. But I only learned that was only with the aid of other spellcasters. Mm. Um, who had discovered these worlds. I could never reach them. Um, the one that I know um, is um, not that different from our own world. Um, obviously, you would have to learn the language and so on. Um, so... Um, but uh, it is possible. Um, when would you want to go? Um, I, I, you know, I look at Claire and, and I, and I say there, I have a lot of options I am pursuing that are alternatives to this plan. This is kind of a, uh, um, a the what's the term? Not last dit, last resort. Right. This plan to go to another world would kind of be a last resort. Um, right. Um, so it might be something that would be good to have ready. Um, and then if uh, I ever needed it to, to call on you. I know that's asking a lot. Um, but does that sound feasible? And what would you offer in terms of passage, in exchange for passage? 
when she says passage as in like her casting the spell or yes okay it's like well i have um it kind of depends on what you are interested in i have rare magical items i have some very valuable items um should i just pull out the crossbow <laughs> no, i think that seems kind of that might not be effective that is interesting um uh, for our viewers, uh, Bruce uh -huh. discovered a um, very strange but very powerful crossbow made out of a strange uh, red. It's red, right? It's a red material, except for its... Um, right. Very plain design, but very interesting, very unique material. Right. And as the stats go, it's it's almost off the charts in terms of just how finely made and, and material wise it is yeah um, so uh, i honestly i will just i think that's a better a better explanation than than anything um i'll just i just you know i just pull out from my bag this crossbow and and tell her and you know um, uh, i've had several people tell me that this is worth uh how much gold wow if you can't remember that number it was a big number yeah, that's why it should be memorable. Well, I remember it was over 10,000. I think it's 22,000 gold. 26,000 gold. 26,000. I've, I've had this appraised at 26,000 gold. The material is exquisite, and uh, a lot of people have expressed interest. Um, I, this could you know, get you a lot of places. <laughs> um, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> just like I'm doing right now. And I'll just, you know, I offer it to her I, or I just kind of hold it out. Um, she, you know, gestures to take it from you to examine it. Reaches for it. And are you gonna let her take it? I will. And she grabs it. Okay. Ha! And, and teleports away. <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> um, she feels it in her hand. She, I mean, she runs. She's. She says, "I've never seen anything like this." Um, so, what is that? What are the numbers on there? Do you remember? Yeah. Uh, so, in plus the end, forty substance, uh, six pounds. Wow, that's, that's all light crossbow. That's incredible. So, uh, in this system, gang. Wait, the, Sorry, I, was, I have a note here that the material might be valuable to certain sorcerers. Was yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to describe it as well. So, right. Uh, so, gang, in, in, in this system, uh, in Karandran, uh, a bonus can come from the design of an item, the material the item is made out of, the um, um, whether it has magic on it, whether it has runes on it. Um, and uh, bonuses, unlike in D&D, bonuses here, instead of going plus one, plus two, plus three, they go plus five, plus 10, plus 15. So this crossbow is a plus 40 crossbow. So you could say a plus eight in, um, in Rollmaster, sorry, in Dungeons and Dragons. And um, I mean, it is truly a remarkable weapon. I mean, a weapon, maybe not for a king, Although it wouldn't take it much to get it there, um, but definitely for someone of princely power. Um, and um, I think it might be time for a miracle roll and just say that, you know, the material this is made of is of such use to her. It's something she's been looking for that she is willing to, you know, open this portal to a place that she knows and will do everything in her power to help me. Well, before you do that, I want you to roll. Okay. Okay. 67. Huh. So she is marveling on it. You see her pass a look to Adabir. Um, and Adabir looks at her clearly annoyed and there is um 
uh, just a deep, <laughs> thank you for the drum, lo drum roll, uh, change, uh, Blaze, I appreciate that. Um, clearly, there is some sort of agreement between these two. And you just get a, I mean, you just get a, a stab of fear like you don't know what's going on. Okay. Uh, I'm going to call that out. <laughs> I'm not just going to sit here and say something wrong. To whom? To Adabir. <clears throat> I'm not one to let that slide. Of course not, my girl. No, no, indeed. No, nothing. Roll for me. Uh, 97. Roll again and add it. Oh, my gosh. 75. Wow. Wow. Um, he is, um, that's hilarious, Kelly. Um, he was, he's clearly lying. Um, um, uh, how do I do that respectfully? I guess. I mean, it's like, I'll, I, I, I think there is something wrong. I would like to know you, um, I want us to all be on friendly terms here. If I've overstepped my boundaries or there's some source of conflict that's coming about, I don't want it to, uh, to fester. Let me check Adabir's personality. What? Oh, it's wrong button. That's why. Sorry, it's taking me a bit to get to the character. Cannot wait to have this going. Hmm. Um, he's like, nothing is wrong. Nothing. I, I was just admiring the crossbow and I too want us to be on friendly terms. I, I apologize if I've made you doubt me. Um, uh, everything is fine. Um, Lashwin, um, looks at, you know, looks at Adabir and looks back at you and says, um, I would eagerly take this as payment. Um, absolutely. Um, this is truly remarkable. Um, awesome. This is really weird. I didn't expect this to turn out this way. But that's the great thing about having that's a totally right. sandbox. Yeah. yeah. Totally sandbox system. Um, and Adabir says you can't and then stops himself glances at you and then sits back and just you know covers his mouth. <laughs> I just look at out of here <laughs> like Ex excuse me um well just remain silent for a couple seconds is that gonna play itself out or is <laughs> no one gonna say anything that's a good question. How do I make that determination? Isn't that weird? It's well, yeah, I mean, if, if Lash, because I don't know this agreement between them, if, if Lashwin has some, knows, right, right. You, she knows him do, way better. So how do I determine whether or not she breaks or he breaks? You know what I mean? It's interesting. There's not yeah. really a, a stat. Yeah. A stat or skill in the game that really covers that. So maybe what we do is, uh, Hmm. You know what I didn't do? Once you give, once you roll um, your gut feeling on, uh, well, I want to roll the gut feeling on intuition, and then I'm going to have you roll also for sort of um, 
Let's see if there's an ability for you to deduce what's going on. My gut feeling is a 22. Okay, so not much help there. And so try reasoning. 23. Jesus Christ. Um, All right, Kevin. I what what have I stumbled in upon? Um, Lashwin um, sets the crossbow down, you know, in front of you and sits back and says, Adabir has your best interest in mind. I assure you of that. He, oh, what? I, keep going, keep going. Oh. He wanted me to be. He didn't want me to take up any sort of offer uh, regarding taking you out of this world. Because if there's he wants a, to further his research. <laughs> well, not merely that, but because it could add significantly to your chances survival. If we are able to find the demon Kralum and to find that place where it is chained, um, and he's told me nothing about who has chained this creature, um, then your chances of survival against this demon would be greatly increased. Mm -hmm. And by the same token, his belief that demons can be captured and their powers could be put to good use could be tested in a way never before seen in the history of research. Mm -hmm. He meant nothing by it, dear. Mm -hmm. But this crossbow, Adabir, I'm sorry. This is a this is groundbreaking. Could Max figured it out, but Brees did not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean I'll 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 look at out of beer and, and Brees will say, um, um, again, this is, this is the last resort. If, if everything fails to have Lashwin, you know, um, if, if what we're planning goes South, it could be the fate of thousands of lives. Um, it's important that we have, you know, as many La options as possible. Lashwin reacts very strangely. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Shouldn't I? Shouldn't have said that. <sighs> and turns to Adabir and says, Thousands of lives. Uh, the creature is chained. And don't worry about it. <laughs> and if it's unchained, it'll be cast back to its realm. <laughs> Overstep my boundaries. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Just put your foot in your mouth. You really did. Oh man, Adabir is so goddamn mad. Holy <laughs> shit. Holy shit. That is three open ended rolls. No. Oh my God. He's going to have a heart attack. Oh man. If I had called blue instead of green, it would have been four open ended rolls. Oh, gee. Uh, four, two, six, 63. His anger on a scale of one to a hundred is three hundred and sixty-three. <laughs> if if he just dies right now because he's it is seriously, I mean, yeah, I have to consider that it is dangerous to his health to be this mad. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. In which case, hey, you've got your solution. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I had one of two options, and one option literally fell to the ground dead. So. Um, oh, my gosh. Okay, well, wait for his reaction then. Meddling, infernal women. And he goes off. Um, there are times where his yell is actually a yell, and there's times where... It's just this raspy whisper, but he's pushing it out with, you know, his face is so red, alarmingly red. Um, 
and um, he stands without help suddenly. Um, <laughs> and, and he he gets just extremely dizzy. He well, people you all sort of lunge to help him. He falls before you guys can get up. Oh, he man. falls back on the couch um, and is just in a sputtering, uh, trembling. Um, state. Um, Falag, uh, Falagel, um, you know, is on her feet calling for help. Um, and they, um, the servants come, um, they, they basically, I mean, the, they basically make a litter out of a. Um, <laughs> that's right, Pooch Uh They literally make a, li a litter out of a blanket. If you, of course, you're a Boy Scout, you know. And so they, yeah. you know, they lift him gently and lay him on the floor on this blanket. And they use the two ends of the blanket to to lift him up and and to move him um, to a different uh, room. Um, uh, you see Quinn's comment? Did <laughs> <laughs> you call me a bitch? I thought, uh, come on, Quinn. I thought you were going to go for the C Ooh. word. That's what I thought you were going to go for. Um, so, um, so, um, they take him away. Um, Lashwin is just beside herself uh, at, you know, sort of being a party to this, you know, um, and um, um, oh, I got you, Quinn. I know the I know the skit you're talking about. You sh I think you showed it to me, in fact. Oh, I don't remember that one. Uh, it's two guys, you know, Key and Peel. Uh, coming together with their wives, you know, to, to have a couple's thing. Right. And they're telling stories about getting mad at their wives. And they lower the voice, right? Like whenever they say, they right. Say, yeah. Exactly. Right. He goes, and I said, bitch, you know, and it was, because you said it though, you actually said it, you know, um, right, right, right. because they're actually afraid of their wives, you know? Funny, yeah. uh, so, That's so funny. true too. It's so true, guys. I love those guys who talk big like that and then get shut down, Harry. But um, <clears throat> um, 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 so uh, you guys just sit there. Yeah. Um. So it might be a good time to take a break, and then we'll see what happens. Uh, okay. Yeah. That no, that sounds that sounds good. It's sort of. Leave the situation. Oh, Quinn's gonna go eat anyway, so we're gonna take a break. Um, and uh, and Max, I'll just pull us off screen, we won't have to mute or anything. All right, um, and just text me when you're ready. So, you guys go go grab you something to drink, and thank you for listening. And we'll be back in just a few minutes. Oh, there we go.
Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Thanks for bearing with us through the break. Um, so, uh, obviously, we have a... Uh, um, obviously, we have quite an interesting situation here as Brees has put her foot in her mouth and revealed that thousands of lives are in danger. Uh, so, you know, people storm out. There's just this thick, tense air in the room. Um, and... Um, and um, you and Lashwin sit there and stare at the floor. Um, Lashwin takes a deep breath. Um, and she says, um, what has that old fool kept from me? Why are there thousands of lives in danger? <clears throat> Well, the demon, he's told you about the demon, I imagine. Um, well, yes. Incredibly powerful. Uh, and that there is, a, there is a person, the person who trapped that demon is alive. Is, is this a time to lie, by the way? I know your oh. character doesn't like lying. Yeah, I always forget. Lying is an option. Um... This guy's. This is exactly how nice Max is. He has a hard time remembering. It bleeds, bleeds into my characters too. It really does. He is just that nice. Whereas I have no problem lying to anyone. I I don't care. And it's so funny because the situations Brees ends up in like demand lying. Like I need to because I I can like tell people that I'm that I'm involved in these situations. So yeah, so how would I word it instead? Um, I mean, it's just that the demon's powerful. But then it wouldn't explain why you need to run away. And she is studying your face, looking at your body language. So I need, I think since, since Max is not good at lying, I sometimes need to pass pass the lies to the to the GM to know. <laughs> well, I like, I mean would I it, can. Would it be I, as simple I, as that? The demon itself um, is is dangerous enough um, that if something goes wrong, it could, you know, end all of our lives and many people for many miles around it. Well, roll for me. I mean, I know when that that wouldn't explain me trying to need leave the world. Uh, Seventy nine. Um, the hole you feel in that story is that um, is that why would Adabir hide that from her? If that were the case, right? Well, I mean, that's obvious because he doesn't want to admit the dangers. I've talked to him before and he seems like a person who's like very much about like the best possible outcome. Like he knows they're dangerous, but he's he's pretty confident in his ability. He's, uh, he's confident he's a risk taker. Is that what you're saying? Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel like Lash Lashwin knows that too. He wanted to call her Lashwin for some reason. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's a uh, French, French bite. Or, yeah. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I kind of want to appeal to that. Um and, you know, just to say that this mission is very dangerous. This demon, what Adabir wants to try, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not one hundred percent in, um, in confidence with with his plans. All right, roll for me. Which is actually partly the truth, anyway. So, sure. uh, twenty-seven. <laughs> hey, Wiz. Oh boy. Um, um, he says, uh, she says, um, fine, fine. Keep your secrets, you two. It's fine. Maybe you have good reason. Hmm? I mean, then I, well, the old do, I, do, I, do I need to add anything to that? Would it be worth telling her that, you know, it is, it is better 
you know, that, um, do I tell her that you'll be safer if it's, um, if, uh, I don't tell you the full reason behind it. It couldn't hurt to say that, right? Yeah. I don't know. Cause I don't know if that would make her more curious or more like, you know, well, you know, her so little, you know, right. So I, so I will, I just, I, I feel like it seems the, um, courteous thing to do is just to say, it's like, well, trust me, I'm doing this to, to protect, uh, to protect you and everyone else. The less, the less people that need to know about, um, this, this, um, this mission, the, the better. All right, all right, I believe you. But why then put dear Adabir in danger? Surely you can see he is not a well man. I mean, you've thought well enough of protecting others, but you have put everything on the line for him. Well, when I came to him a few days ago, um, he and I brought this idea up to him, the enthusiasm he showed for it, I, it would seem, you know, impossible to try to deter him from it anyway. Plus it is, you know, he does seem, that's not the right way to word that. He does seem happier. Um, it's giving him a sort of a new lease on life. Yeah, kind of better than spending like so many days in in bed. Like, um, like I've I've heard him. I heard he has. It is his passion, after all. Brees, you're too young to understand, but there is a time in one's life for passion, and Adabir is well past that. The man is nearing 90. She stands. She starts sort of just pacing the room and, and, you know, and she's got her head, you know, rubbing her head and she's just, you know, and you just kind of watch her. This portal that you need does it solve everything yes and no it solves the problem by way of stalling it because if we don't free that demon if we don't do something about him the problem may never come to pass may likely it will never come to pass um but right i don't know if i worded that correctly <laughs> yeah escaping to another world is solving the problem in as much as we're stalling it indefinitely actually going after the demon is the surefire solution more dangerous yes but you must know surely if you don't adabir must have told you that demon is unimaginably dangerous yes Yes, I do know. Why have you not run before now? When she says run, as in take. Why haven't you fled? To Into another, another world. world, she means, right? Like, like yeah. Okay. Because I believe we can 
do this. <laughs> That's a really poor way of putting it. Um, cause I don't believe running from your problems is the way to go about things, no matter how dangerous or uh, impossible they are. My dear, this is not, this is not a fight with your mother. This isn't some love spurned. This is a realm lord trapped in our world. Which is all the more reason to get it out. <laughs> all the more reason to 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 do this and not turn a blind eye to such a uh, terrible evil, terrible danger. Has it ever crossed your mind that the longer it's here, if someone follows you and finds Kralum and frees it with worse intentions than you have, then that demon could possibly be indebted to that individual forever. It could come to you and add a beer. And instead of uh, killing you, it could tempt you with such power that you would be helpless to resist, regardless of your intentions. Even success is dangerous. Yes. <laughs> These are things I've thought about and considered. Uh, the old yes. <laughs> mm. Mm. I concur. Uh, I don't know. Do, is there a rebuttal to that? Or, I mean, it's just, I, I understand there are immense risks. Or at least I try to understand. You know, I, I think about it every night. Surely this mountain prison must be guarded by considerable powers. It's reasonable to believe. Adabir won't risk himself until he knows it's reasonably safe. He knows his own frailty. If the problem can be likely solved by your leaving this world, then why risk anyone? Why not just leave? to respond to that she's asking me like the same question but she didn't like my answer before yeah is and as you said before with someone with worse intentions finding Kralum and doing the same thing we're doing now. Um, is it not our responsibility, you know, to, to take care of this? That's been trying to, to do involve people that I can, I can trust and have knowledge in this. It sounds to you like we should just forget about the problem entirely and turn a blind eye to it, which frankly, I think is a, not a good idea. If you, uh, I'll add, if you know people who are more qualified than Adabir, 
uh, or myself to um, work on this matter and who are willing to risk their life the same way that I am, then by all means, we could use their help. Adabir chases the dreams of his youth. You, I'm not certain what your goals are. But it's fair to say that this is well beyond anything that even a seasoned adventurer would have faced. There are others who are perhaps ahead of Adabir in demon lore. But none of them have the courage to risk themselves on such a fool's errand. And I fear they would be more interested in currying the demon's favor than anything else. Right. Oh, you pretty little thing. What have you gotten yourself into? Ask myself that every morning. <laughs> There is another option. It may be possible. Not for me. It's beyond my skill. As much as I know about portals and traveling to other worlds, there was a young lecturer at one of the magical colleges some years ago, a woman named Prethnot. And though she was young, she was considered absolutely brilliant. Gosh, Kevin, killing me. It is possible. I could take you out of this world. There's no question about that. It will be dangerous. The spell is a lengthy one and of great power. But another option that presents itself is it may be possible, depending on the enchantments of this demon's prison, to instead take him out of our world with a portal. He would then be free of his chains and then Whatever world he winds up in would immediately reject him and he would again be cast back to his realm. Interesting. But Prethnot is known to be very secretive. Um, would it benefit if I mentioned that I've spoken with Prethnot? There is only one way to find out. I'm just thinking like... Um... I, yeah, I guess I guess it would it would benefit. Yeah, it would at least tighten things. And I'll say that the person you mentioned, Prethnot, I have spoken with them. I know I am good friends with one of a friend of hers. Who we have a mutual helps. friend. We have a mutual friend. Yes, mutual contact. Um, I have not presented to her the idea you mentioned. Now, well, I have merely. Yes that she, as brilliant as she was those years ago, I can only imagine that her knowledge and power have grown. She must not feel it worth the risk or likely to happen, likely to work. Right. I have not brought the idea up with her, though, that specific idea. And like you said, she is a little bit difficult to, to get a hold of and to work with. She sits again, she takes her tea off the table, 
you know, and she just sits there and looks into her cup, you know, she's just going through ideas. Um, uh, do I want to mention anything to her? I just to try to drive home the point of, you know, who's going to take care of this problem. You know, I've spoken with the um, temples in Alamar. Um, Alamar is the city, right? In, no, no. Well, yes, Alamar. Yes. That's yeah, I've, sp board. I've spoken with uh, priests in Alamar and they too are aware of the issue um, to an extent, but they told me they will require months of research and we might not even have months. Um, if this problem is as dangerous as you know, it is. She just, I mean, I mean, she sort of nods and listens to you, but you know, she's just, I mean, she's just deep in thought, you know, she's, yeah, um, she's stuck. Um, and you can feel free to interrupt here. Um, but you know, as you, you know, as the moments pass, there is a, a kerfuffle outside the door. And Felagwell just burst in. Um, and she's like, I don't know what you have dragged my father into. But this is the end of it. Lashwin, I expected more from you. You, I don't know, Brees. But you are no longer welcome here. turns to the butler standing outside the door and you feel free to interrupt. Yeah. I, I mean, I want to interrupt. So I would like to speak to Adabir himself, please. You will never speak to him again. Do you hear me? You will never speak to my father again. Oh, I don't like that. Um, my character doesn't like being told what to do. What am I going to do about that? Um, hey, that crossbow sitting on the table. I, I don't want to like go as far as to threaten, but I need to. Do I charm her? Do I do some magic? Okay, how, how crazy would it be to charm her right now? I can't use my tome, obviously. Um, but I do have, this is, I, this is a question for you, Kevin. I have leather bracers that can cast charm. Obviously I'm not wearing them. They're in my bags, which are on the table. Can I just like touch the, <laughs> how does that work? No, you need to be in physical contact with it. Okay. So it's not going to work. I mean, you could stand to go. Right, and then put the crossbow in the bag, and then grab it. So, so I would need to grab the bag itself, and then just make sure the bag is on me, and then I can. Well, can well, you know, you need to be in physical contact with the bracers. Okay, so, so they can't just be in my bag. So, grab the bag that they're in. Act, you know, put the crossbow in there. Grab Run the bracers. Around. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. Then, yeah, it, I'm gonna I'm gonna try that. Um, I will 
I mean, the butler's right there, right? But yeah, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll gonna try to grab the bag. Um, I'll say, I understand. Um, and then I'll just go, go as if I'm making the leave. I will take the crossbow, go over to my bag, open it up and put it in there. Um, and then rummage around, find the bracers and Lash when stands when you stand, you know, because it's sort of one of these social cue things, you right. know. And so you stand, she sets it down, she looks at at um Fallaglel and she's like, I'm so sorry, my dear. You know, she takes a few steps forward. You've, you know, you the bags are right beside you. You you know, you've stood and you've put it in there. The bracers are in your hand. Um you do know that charm works well at very close range. So just a couple of steps toward her. Um, uh, and then, um, do you want to use, what type of bag is the, is the, are the bracers in just a regular bag, right? Yeah. They're just in a sack sack with my armor. Yeah. yeah. So you don't even have to take them out of the bag. You just kind of point and concentrate and then we'll have you roll. All right, here we go, everybody. We try to charm her. It'll be for a good while if, uh, if it works. Oh. Kevin. <laughs> God. Kevin. I rolled an eight. Oh, my Lord. Um, that is uh, actually not a fumble. It's not. It is not. Oh, thank God. Um, I don't know why not, but. Uh, a six is a fumble with a magic item. Oh, thank God. Okay. So it's just you oh, sort of failed to use it. You know, you failed to activate it is all it means. Yeah. It just um, So you sit and you like sort of adjust something. Lash one continues to, you know, try to make amends. Um. I could try she it again. Does, <laughs> well, she does seem to be making some progress. Okay. Uh, um, I mean, I've already, I've already said I'm going to, I mean, I guess I just act like I'm, you know, finishing up, putting my stuff away and then kind of turn back and see her making sort yeah, of you, progress. And so well, you can hear it, right? I mean, you can hear just from tone of voice. Right, right. You I know? just need an excuse to linger. That's what I mean. Yeah. Well, so. they're blocking the doorway right now. Oh, so, sure. You know, so you sort of already have that. Um, so, um, um, Fala Glell is saying, um, you know, I understand. I know that you didn't mean any harm. I know, but right now I just need to be alone and I need to tend to him. And, you know, and so she's still mad and she's still insistent that you leave, but she is not rocketingly furious like she was a moment ago. Um, okay. So um, are you going to try again? Or are you going to give her more time? So uh, let me throw this by you. If I wait longer and I do leave, well, could I just stay in the house? Or does that seem... Because she, she already said you you need to go. But now she's kind of be like, uh, she's backing off. I mean, she's sort of backing off. She's not as, as insistent that you leave instantly. Right. So maybe I will, I will wait longer if I can stay within the house. My fear is I leave the house and then how am I going to get in without shaking people up? You know? Um, well, I mean, right now, yeah. right now, the only thing between me and Adabir is her. So if I, you know, if I can keep it that way, that's what I want to do. Well, the thing is, if a radical change occurs over um, Falaglel, then you're going to, you too are going to be the number one suspects. Yes, that's why I don't want to cast Charm. Okay, right? so, you, so what... Right, so I don't what, want to cast Charm, but I don't want to leave. I just want to stay put. <laughs> to what end, though? You know? To the and, end that she does calm down and lets me at least talk to Adabir once more. There's no way she's going to calm down 
you know, she's got to tend to her father anyway. Right. And you lingering is not going to let her do that. And it's going to, it's okay. going to suggest to her that you don't care about Adabir's well being. Okay. You know, I mean, okay. Right. Cause I forgot he fell down and he was angry. Yeah. Right. Because they don't care about his well being. Cause <laughs> I forgot that he hurt himself kind of. You know, when we were on break, right. I walked by Karen in the bedroom. Karen was like, wait, 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 what's going on? So I gave her this thing and I told her, cause I, I can tell you now, but I was within one point. My role was within one point of damaging Adabir's health. He was so oh, angry. Gosh. I said, you know, I think it's about a one in four that he doesn't have a major episode of right. something. Right. And um, I was one point off. Wow. Okay. Um, um, okay. I understand that. Ah. <sighs> So the decision is then either I, I just charm her just to at least talk to Adabir once more or. Um, but what, what good is that going to do? He's also so furious. I guess he still is. Yeah. So, I mean, so yeah. what is there to say to him? Like, well, I mean, uh, I mean, you sort of got to think of your not really a long term well, plan. I, what I wanted to know is, is did that conversation between him and her go down like, you know, she's saying she's shutting his research down, basically, which is what he really was passionate about and wanted to do. So that was my first instinct is let me talk to him and, and see, you know, if that was that his decision or uh, is that? Oh, I mean, I don't think you have any question as to whose decision it is. Right. Yeah, right. I don't think that, I don't think you need confirmation on that point. You know, right. Okay, so then I don't I don't know what to do, Kevin. Like this, there may and this is I just can't this access is, it, like and this is this is one of the shittiest things to learn about all of life is that sometimes there's nothing to do. Right, you know? because he, he is he's invalid, right? He needs his daughter and other people to help him, but right. if, if they're not gonna help him, then this no. is like this is the same feeling that everyday humans get when there's a death in the family. It's that sense of uh, enormous emotion coupled with complete powerlessness to change things. You know, the only thing that's going to change thing uh, is time. You know, I don't have time. I know. I will remember my, I will, I'll always remember my buddy Russ coming uh, to Andrew's memorial in this little park back in Georgia. And he walked up to me and he's this really funny guy, really intelligent guy. And he walked up and um, he looked over at me and goes, it just sucks. He goes, there's nothing else I can tell you. And that's just it. It just sucks. And I said, mm -hmm. I agree. You know, and that's sort of where you are. The situation just sucks. Now you might get more information out of Lashwin. You might brainstorm more with her. Right. You might just camp out in the area or you could teleport back and forth, whatever you want to do, you know. Um, but um, the read here is that, you know, well, all right. Well, the talk with Adabir is done. Uh, at least for today. Yeah. Uh, why don't you roll? I do have another thought that would have, what should occur to you, but unfortunately it's a uh, 84. Boom. Look at you. Well, um, a way to gain influence in a household is to bribe the servants. If you can be told when Fala, uh, Fala is, is gone, then, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, then, um, then you have a huge advantage. True. Yeah. It still doesn't solve the problem of, of you know, if she's going to not support his research then. Right. But that's a, but, but that's, that's that's a secondary that's, thing anyway. That's down the road, right? Yeah. You have to be, you know, I mean, at some point, I mean, if you, if this goes wrong, well, then what's going to happen is, you're going to put Adabir in a position to choose between his daughter and his research. Right. And right. you honestly need her on board just to tend to his medical needs. Yeah. Also, I don't know how feel, how good I feel about 
doing that decision or, you know, saving lives or not, like <laughs> to have a man choose to make right. a choice is, is very, I, I don't know if I could live with that in guilt easily. Um, but yeah, I, th I think that does seem like a good option to come back when she is not here. Um, and of course, there's groundskeepers as well. And maybe you go out and you... Oh, well, well, yeah, the first thing is I do want to talk to um, Lashwin. So I, you know, they're blocking the door right now. I'll just linger, wait for them. When they separate, um, I'll just try to talk to Lashwin and, and go from like, there. Just go outside with her, you know. Yeah, yeah. While they fetch her horse, you can talk. You know, the other thing, too, is, um, and I don't mean entirely sexually, of course, but, I mean, you are a beauty, and there's a lot of male servants around here that, you know, you could give a wink and a yeah. smile to and maybe get some things done. Yeah. Um, so, um, all right. So, um, Lashwin, you know, says, of course, you know, of course we'll go and all that sort of includes you in the decision by looking at you. Mm-hmm. You know, out of, uh, sorry, uh, Falaglel stop the steps aside. The butler walks you both out. Again, stop me anytime here if you need to take an action. Um, opens the, opens the, uh, you know, front door for you guys. You go out. Um, word is passed to someone to go fetch the horse. Off they run. The door is closed. Falaglel has remained inside. Um, and, um, last one is, you know, I mean, she's just sort of still kind of just lost in thought and, right. and beside herself, just kind of as you are. Well, I will, I will, as we're walking out, I just, you know, stop and pull her aside and, and, you know, um, say, um, well, you know, what, what's the, uh, what did Valaglo tell you the same as me or were you able I mean, to you, you know, pretty much overheard everything that was said? Cause I mean, it's, it's a okay. small parlor and you guys okay. are all sort of grouped around the door. And so it was all of this, you know, Lashman was repeatedly apologetic. Um, Falaglo was clearly trying to make an effort to, if not check her anger, at least check her outbursts. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, um, you know, you did hear that, uh, Lashwin was granted permission to come and check on them both in a couple of days. Um, okay. Uh, well, in, in that case, you know, I just, first I want to apologize to her, you know, just sorry for, you know, bringing you into something like this, uh, and causing such a ruckus. <laughs> Well, Adabir is the one who convinced me to lie to you. And he certainly has withheld a lot of information, which perhaps is not his to withhold. You have every right not to tell me what you wish. You've asked nothing of me. Um, and you've certainly offered more than generous payment. Um, I can take you to the world that I know, uh, given just a few days preparation. The crossbow um, will be more than enough in payment. And I will see to it as well that you have the things you need for the journey to the world I have in mind. That is nice. Um, thank you. That is uh, definitely a weight off my shoulders uh, that you'll be able to do that. Um, and that, you know, that offer, yeah, 
absolutely. I will take you up on that um, if, if I need it. Um, you realize it could be months searching for that volcanic prison and many more months before you're able to breach its defenses. Whatever this great danger is that you're worried about will have months to move forward as well. Right. The horse arrives. Um, I will, uh, one other thing, so that, and, and then ask her about, and does it seem that, um, well, how do, how do I word it? I, I'll just start off saying it's such a shame that Adabir is such a knowledgeable and competent man for this task, but as you said, and as we saw, he is so, um, so frail and we're putting him in so much danger. Um, you know, lead with that. Uh. He is a man that means well. And that That's worth a lot. But meaning well and being able to accomplish it are two different things. And dear, dear Fowl, she's not going to let us get near him for at least a couple of days. So, well, do you think it's worth coming back then at, at some point to restart that discussion or is she, is she serious in, in that, uh, in what she says that the research is, is over, uh, by her, by her own whim, not by her own win, but by, by her concern for, for Adabir, for her father. I've known them some years now, 10 or 12. I have never seen her so angry. But I don't know. I just don't know. Obi Wan Karen, what is that emoji you pat you posted? I can't make that it's out. A shrugging, shrugging woman. Is it a shrugging woman? It's like this. Yeah. Okay. At first, I thought it was like a flower, like a like a lotus blossom resting yeah. on something. The actual like human emojis with torsos is, are very they're very small. <laughs> they're Bruce very hard Watt. to go. Yeah. Looks like me after a buffet. Uh -huh. I will not um, see out of here in several days for certain. Uh, oh. So, um, she um, sort of, um, you want me to put on, I'll put on my glasses so I can make it out. You know, I'll give it a go, but honestly, no idea what that is. Although you are right to point out, Kelly, that I am old. Um, oh, now I see that it's nothing. I have no idea. <laughs> now I see that, no. Um, you obviously need stronger glasses. That's right. Um, so she, if they just replaced all like the letters on a night chart with just emojis? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Honestly, then you have like cross culture, you know, you know, because human just so well, funny. A lot of human gestures are more common across cultures than they are at letters, right? So that's right. Um. So uh, she sort of, you know, she sort of, you know, grabs your arm, and gives you a squeeze, and sort of looks at you like, you know, this is a tough situation. You know, she swings on. You're like, darling, your clothes are just so stained. They're so they're in such bad shape. Why do you wear breeches? That's just awful. Um, I wear breeches, but <laughs> when I'm adventuring, <laughs> not when I'm going right. to see uh, uh, high class folk. Right. 
and um, off she rides. Um, the the groom who brought the horse, um, he's standing by in case um, you need anything. He's a young, he is a young male. Um, yeah, I think I do want to take up on that offer of trying to bribe the guy. Um, I'll uh, stride over to him. Well, he's, I mean, he's right beside you. You know, he had to hold the horse for her. So, oh, okay. Well, I'll just I'll just talk to him, and while I'm talking to him, pull out um, I don't know, maybe six gold pieces. How much? How much would he get paid? Like his uh, his kind of pay? Six gold. That's a lot, right? Holy shit, Kevin! I you know I always get confused about the currency in this world. How much? How much would uh, all right? So he, get paid. <laughs> He's probably got Reason meals. He's, he's probably got uh, meals covered. He's probably got board covered, and so I mean that's and that's decent. So that's probably about. So if you, you say compensation, right? That's about a gold a month. Right. Oh, okay. and, all right. And so then the rest of it, he would get some spending money. Right. Um, probably. What do I think? It would probably be enough for him to do what drinks on the weekend, something like that. So probably, um, it would probably be a few copper a day. Right. And there's a thousand copper. There's a thousand copper in a gold. Right. So if I give him one gold piece, that would be pretty, pretty great. <laughs> That's pretty nice. You know, maybe, maybe two, but yes. Uh, yeah, maybe okay. just a few silver. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll just one gold because the ease of it, you know, just to have a gold coin. Um, um, well, we're, so I mean, so give me this presentation. Just asking him, it's like, um, could could you send me word at the tea and loaf in convergence when um, Falaglow may be out uh, and Adabir's at home? Well, so that. Keep in mind that his message is going to take some hours to reach you. Right. And, you know, you can be there almost instantly. So how long do you need to specify? I guess what I'm asking. Well, yeah, yeah. Good point. Yeah. I mean, I, I would like him to send me a note. When is the next time? Uh, She'll be gone for some hours. That right. Alaglo will be gone for a few hours and Atterbury will be home alone. Um, and you, uh, are, so do you want, not the lawful phallic you just need the, um, um, you need to also specify like how long this arrangement is for this gold pays for how, how many weeks of him doing days of him doing this. Oh, okay. Um, I don't so know. You, what's you, would, you would double his wages. Right. right, just the next opportunity, right? Why can't he just send me? Well, that? because uh, do you think it's going to be just one meeting? For now, right? I, I just because I wanted to make it subtle and quick, so just like you know. Well, you know. could just say, you know, for the next month. Let Please me know. tell me. Send yeah. note whenever you know that Lady Falagal is going to be gone for some hours and Adabir will be alone at the household. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Very specific, like, but I is like, well, yeah, but you know, it's a, it's a deal you're making. Yeah. So. Yeah. I get you. I get you. Um, absolutely, ma'am. Absolutely. And he, he takes it. Let me write down exactly what I told him because uh, his name is Burra, B-U-R-R-A. Young, um, young human. He's uh, he's a little younger than you. Um. Yeah, tea and loaf, convergence, you know, when she's out, you know, at least part of the day. 
I guess really about half a day, right? It'd be basically uh, the morning or afternoon. She'd probably be out. Well, I mean, my thought was too, is like, what if she had some business to attend to a, in town and the servants know that ahead of time. So he just sends me two days earlier on this date. Sure. She's going to be in town. That, that was my thought process. I didn't, yeah, I don't want to know, like spy on her and tell me where she is, you know? That's... Well, no, but like, but you do need to have enough time for the meeting. So it's basically whenever she, he gets out a horse for her, that's when he's going to contact you. True. Yeah. Cause then it's going to be a longer distance. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, and that's the great thing about, I mean, of course you just happen to cross the groom anyway, but that is one of the unforeseen advantages of having the groom do it. Um, now even better, of course, is, um, um, you know, it's better to have someone inside who would be more familiar with their actual schedule. Right. Um, yeah. But this is the next best thing. It really is because they're in charge of the horses. The only complexity is it's not necessarily the same groomsman every time. And so they might just be shoveling, uh -huh. mucking stalls, you know. Interesting, yeah. And so. Um, um, so um, I guess off you walk. And um, one sec, I need to. Yeah. So starting on what's today's date? Four eight. Yep. yep. Starting. Okay. okay. Um, is that everything then? I think so. Oh, uh, well, I wanted to ask. Well, Prethnot's already gone. I mean, Prethnot. Um, Lashwin's already gone. I don't know where where she lives at all. Could we have discussed that? You know, when she was saying about the the portal, I would have asked her. It's like, well, then I, you know, will appear at your doorstep possibly when I uh, I require your services, or shall I send a note for you? Um, she's like. Um... She tells you, you know, any of the houses, um, you know, down this lane, she says, ask anywhere there and they'll point you my way. Okay. I, they could point you here as well, but I'm not sure you'll ever be back here. It's for his house. That's for his house. I like Lashwin. She's a fun character. Yeah, she seems kind of interesting. It's like all her disheveledness, you know, she has a vanity of one. <laughs> but yeah, but very, very competent, very like serious too. I, I almost kind of was just like, oh, she's probably, she's probably going to be like really on board with this idea. Like, yeah, it's dangerous, whatever. But it's no, it's just, right. her, just about her appearance. That's, that's the only, the only thing. Which is, you know, that's what I like. You know, it's a, there's one of the things I like about Carandron is that, you know, I don't sort of run this kind of dumb tropes where it's like archetypes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where it's just like, Oh, well this, this guard has to be big and mean looking. No, he could be, he could be perfectly friendly looking, but he will still kick your ass, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, as for us, any places on this lane. Okay. All right. Well, I think it's a good place to stop, don't you? With you just walking off and then. Well, it's not a good place, but ah. it is a good place to stop. Yes. Um, and so, um, and so, um, um, well, thank our thank our audience for watching. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hope uh, you guys enjoyed. This was a interesting session. I probably Kevin didn't know either. It was going to go this way. Uh, <laughs> that's true i don't i really don't plan i plan just a little bit ahead uh but i don't you know i don't i let the roles come very organically and so on so yeah, yeah it was very yeah. interesting i hope it was as fun to watch as it was to, to play through because it was definitely making my brain work really hard <laughs> to <laughs> put myself in that situation so you're gonna go back to work tomorrow and just be exhausted and like what happened <laughs> I, yeah i really will be Carandrin, you don't understand like is that a new medicine what are you talking about it's uh, not a medicine, trust me. <laughs> it no. has no healing properties whatsoever. No. So, well, uh, I want to thank everyone for hanging out with us. I always appreciate it. Um, 
Um, I hope you had a great time. I, I always have a, I, I love game mastering, so I always have a great time and, and I really enjoy Max's contributions. Um, he takes, he takes his role really, really seriously, uh, and still has a lot of fun with it. Uh, and he's fun to, he's fun to pick on. So, um, so um, love to you all. Um, again, the typical stuff, uh, like, subscribe, um, go to our donation page and at least read my jokes, if nothing else. Um, and, um, um, you know, tell your friends if they're interested in role playing, you know, spread the word. And if they're interested in a good story um, and we will um, um, we will see you uh, next Tuesday for the continuation of Ganry's tale, and then next Wednesday for the continuation of, continuation of Brees's tale. So um, uh, thank you all, uh, and thank you all for your your fun in the in the chat and everything. Um, and we will see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>